Good morning and welcome to our webinar today on uh, profit and cash flow. Why it's important to know the difference. Uh, it's a question that I often get asked as an accountant, normally when reviewing the annual tax returns and income tax for a client. Um, the question usually goes along the lines of why have I got so much profit when there's no cash in the bank? So there's a big discrepancy between what people understand of what profit is and, and what cash actually represents. Um, what we're going to look at today is why it's important to know the difference between the two and why they're both important to your business. So very quickly about me, um, I'm your presenter, Paul Sweeney. I'm a business growth specialist, chartered accountant, and I've been working with businesses like yours for over 25 years. Um, our aim is to build value and to increase profits for your business and help you to take a look at the big picture and discover where your business can be doing better. So let's get stuck in. What is profit? Profit is quite simply what is left over after you've deducted your expenses from your revenue. Uh, it might sound simple, but there's a couple of things to remember. Profit is what is left over. It's the result of what happens um, both in your business and to your business. Um, it's not something that you can increase directly. Like a lot of people set a goal that they're going to increase profit, uh, but increasing profit is the outcome of your actions. It's not something you can in, um, directly change. You need to change the things that contribute to your profit, such as your revenue and your expenses. So there are, reasons why we look, need to look at profit and cash flow. Um, profit is important, but it doesn't actually account for whether you've been paid by your customers or whether you've paid for your expenses. Uh, if you've invoiced a customer, that's actually revenue. But if you haven't received the money, that's not cash flow. That's cash not received yet. The same goes for a uh, product that you've you haven't paid for. Uh, it can still be considered an expense, um, but if it, you haven't actually paid for it, it's not a cash flow. So we're going to have a closer look at some of the elements of profit and cash flow. Uh, and, but very simply, let's just clarify, cash flow is the amount of cash that is actually available to your business. And it's the difference between the cash your business pays and the cash it receives in its day-to-day -day activities. So that is what we mean by cash flow. So one of the things we need to be very clear on is that there is a difference between the two. Uh, there is a difference, and, and that main difference is how they are produced. So with profit, there is only one way primarily to, to increase your profit by selling more goods and services for more than what it costs you to produce or make that sale. But there's a lot of different ways to increase your business cash flow. So we're going to have a quick look at those today. Why do you need both? Um, for all, many people believe that a business has to survive. It needs long-term healthy profits. And that's true. But to survive in the long term, it needs healthy profits and a healthy cash flow. A business that can't pay its bills when they're due, uh, that's going to run into trouble. It's called insolvency and it's actually illegal to trade while you're insolvent. So if your business is profitable, you don't have cash flow to cover the bills, you won't be in business for long and that's a big problem. So we need to make a profit, but we need to have a healthy cash flow. So we've talked about profit being the outcome of your actions, the outcome of revenue um, after we deduct our expenses. So let's look at what, are, what is revenue? What are the components that make up profit? So we'll start with revenue. And quite simply, revenue is the number of transactions or sales multiplied by the average value of those sales. So the higher the number of transactions, the higher the value of your revenue. Consequently, the higher the transaction value, the higher your revenue is going to be as well. And these are two key things. So to increase revenue, we need to sell more or sell at a higher rate. The number of transactions, we can increase that by selling more, by either having more customers 
or we can increase the frequency that somebody deals with us. And what we mean by that is that we might have a customer that we sell to once a year. We can increase our number of sales by getting each customer to buy from us twice a year instead of once. So the more our customers transact with us, the higher the number of, uh, of transactions we're gonna have, and that feeds back into revenue. So more, uh, more frequency of dealing with our customers increases the number of transactions, and that increases our revenue. So to do that, a good starting point is to look at how many customers do we actually have, and then look at um, what can I do to increase those customers uh, at the same time stopping people from um, you know, not buying from us in the future. So we need, want to increase our number of customers, so we need to look at strategies for how we can do that. When we increase our customers, we increase our transactions, we increase our revenue, we increase our profit. We're going to be looking at how we increase our average transaction value. Uh, one of those things is the price of the goods, um, or the, the services that we're delivering. Um, we can increase that by um, raising our price or selling at a higher value. The other thing we can do is to increase the volume purchase per transaction. So yeah, instead of getting a customer to buy two items, can we get them to buy three? Um, McDonald's is a very good example of this where they're increasing the value of each transaction um, by offering you uh, fries with everything you buy. So we've come back to profit is influenced by our revenue. And we can, and we've looked at some of the things that influence revenue. So we just recapping on that, we can look at managing our revenue by having customers keep buying from us. So what we call customer defections, we, we stop them from uh, walking away and doing business with other people. We want them to keep coming back. Getting new customers in, increasing the number of customers that you have will increase your ability to generate more revenue. Getting each customer to, to buy from you more often, and that's a key thing as well. Getting them to increase the their number of times that they buy from you from once per year to twice a year, or maybe from five times a year to six times a year. We increase the transaction frequency, we're gonna increase the revenue. Also looking at increasing the transaction size. So increasing the, the size of that um, transaction by um, either selling more quantity or selling at a higher value. And looking at volume and price there as part of that. So we increase the transaction size by increasing the units we sell or the value that we sell them for. So the other side of profit is um, expenses. So we have our revenue and to get to a profit, we deduct our expenses. And what often happens is the way to increase profit, um, most people look at increasing profit by reducing expenses, by cutting costs. Now that can be good where you're spending too much in certain areas, but the key to remember here is that expenses are what you incur to produce revenue. So if you're not um, purchasing resources, so you're not having the stock or the, the, um, what you need to actually deliver a service to your customers, then you're not gonna be able to generate the revenue. So there's certain costs that are going to increase the more that we sell. And we don't want to necessarily reduce those costs, we still need to incur them because we wanna deliver the product. Um, so that we keep our customers coming back, we keep them happy, and they continue to buy from us and they will recommend us to other customers, which then increases our strategy. Um, we do need to, to keep them under control. So we're looking at what's unnecessary, or are we actually getting um, a good return on that money that we're spending? So on the, on the expense side, we need to look at what value are we getting for the cash that we're spending? So if we're spending on a, say, a subscription to a service, but it's not actually helping us to generate any income or to, to do things better, we need to look at, well, is that cash that we should be spending? Is that an expense that this business really, uh, maybe instead of spending on that subscription or maybe that advertising that's not actually generating more customers, we could look to spend our money, um, our cash into a different area that's actually gonna help us produce more income or help us attract more customers. Um, or help us to, to make sales in a more efficient way. Uh, so 
we need to look at expenses. We're not about cutting expenses necessarily, but we need to be careful about where we're spending and what kind of uh, return we're getting on our expenditure. So often when we talk about expenses, you'll probably hear uh, some different terminology. Um, often we talk about variable versus fixed. Uh, and the difference there is that a, a fixed expense will stay the same regardless of how much you sell. So a typical fixed expense is the amount of rent you pay for your facilities so or your office. So that is not going to change depending on how many sales you make. Um, a variable expense is something like your cost of sales. So the more you sell, the, the more you're going to have as a cost because by selling you're going to need to buy the product. So uh, on the other side, the less you sell, your cost should be a lot less as well. Uh, often fixed costs include things like wages which are, or salaries, which are at a fixed level. Uh, a lot of uh, regular subscriptions, um, utilities such as telephone, electricity, they don't tend to change the more volume you, you generate. On the other side, the other way we classify expenses is looking at what's a direct expense and what's an overhead. So an overhead is something that applies to, to the business generally that is not related to the sales function. And the, a typical overheads again are rent, administration costs, um, telephone, utilities, motor vehicles. Expenses that don't actually produce income directly but they're essential for the business to operate. Whereas our direct costs are our costs of um, goods that we're selling, so our purchases, our materials. It might be labour that's directly associated with producing those materials or, or selling. So our salespeople are a direct cost, particularly if we're paying a commission based on the volume of sales. Um, we could be looking at um, using subcontractors to do particular types of work, and they're often class, classed as a direct cost. Another term that's often spoken about in accounting and business terms is gross profit. So gross profit is effectively our revenue from selling our services or goods, taking away our costs of sold. And here we're talking about the, the direct costs of selling or producing our product. Uh, in that we're talking about the materials we've purchased or the goods we've purchased, the costs that are directly associated with that. And that might even be um, freight for selling or transporting the materials or the goods subcontractors um, or direct ma uh, manufacturing costs there. Now we, we often refer to this as a percentage. So what's the percentage of revenue that is actually a, a gross profit? And we do that by taking our, our gross profit in dollar terms and dividing it by the, the amount of revenue we have. So let's say we had $100 of sales revenue. It costs us um, $68 uh, to produce that $100 of sales, that gives us a gross profit of $32. Uh, our gross profit percentage will be 32%. So let's bring it all together. Profit is what's left over after all the expenses have been paid. You can't manage profit. You can only manage the activities that generate revenue and that consume resources. And the objective is to create a business that efficiently uses resources and generates revenue at a lower resource cost than its competitors so that you're going to make more profit. And the end goal there is that we grow a business, but we do so within the limits of what cash is available. So just in terms of recapping, what drives your profitability? We're looking at aspects like price, the transaction size, the volume, the cost of sales, direct expenses, and, and the what your overheads are. So all of those different factors come together to determine what your profit's going to be. Okay, so if we multiply our price by our tra transaction size and our volume, that will come up with our revenue. We'll deduct our cost of sales, our direct expenses, and our overheads, and we end up with our... So to have a sustainable business, we need to sell our products or services for more than what they cost us to produce. And we also need to have, importantly, systems in place to make sure that we collect cash from our sales quickly and efficiently. There's no point having a profitable business if you're not able to have a good, solid and positive cash flow. When we sell um, our product, we'll, send, we'll create an invoice to our customer. We want to collect the money from our customer as quickly as we can. 
Now, if we are unable to collect our, our sales invoice quickly from the customer, then we still have made the profit, but we haven't received the cash. Now, where that becomes a problem is when customers take a long time to pay, and if you're starting out business, you often have to give payment terms, which could be seven days, 14 days, 30 days, or even 60 days, which is a very long time, before you get paid. On, when you're starting business though, you, your suppliers generally won't provide those kinds of terms to you. So you are often required to pay for your products and services at an earlier point, and that is what puts a strain on your cash flow. So in that situation, uh, it's very important to collect cash from your customers as quickly as possible. So you need to have a really good system in place to make sure that that happens. So the longer people take you to take to pay you, the harder it's going to be on your cash flow, the more strain on your business, and that's going to limit how profitably you can grow, but also how long you can continue to operate in business. So we need a really efficient system for collecting cash. And then once we've got the solid cash flow and we've got a positive cash flow from our operations and our profits, we can then use those profits to pay ourselves a wage, to pay the, the required taxes on those profits, but also to reinvest in the business by purchasing the equipment and materials you need to keep growing. Uh, so we're funding the future growth of the business by a positive cash flow. So in this situation where you've got a strong cash flow, you're not gonna need to borrow money from other sources. As soon as you start to borrow money, you have to pay interest. You also have to repay the amounts that you've borrowed. And that puts even more strain on your cash flow. So if you can manage to do that without, um, so if you can manage to grow and invest in the future growth of your company by, by purchasing equipment and materials without needing to borrow, you're going to improve your long-term cash flow as well. At the end of the day, both profit and cash flow are really vital to your business's long-term success. And they're necessary. Um, you've got to look at both. You've got to monitor both. You've got to keep a close eye on what is what your level your profit is and what your cash flow is, but you've also got to um, know what you need. So they're both vital to the long-term success. You can't grow a business profitably in the long term without good profit and good cash flow. And now when you have both good profit and good cash flow, you are able to enjoy those things that really matter to you, the reasons why you went into business, uh, and that's the goal, that you want to create a profitable and positive cash flow business to enable you to enjoy those benefits. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you've got any questions, please contact us on any of the channels below, and have a great day, and we hope that you can grow a profitable business.